It was the winter of 1931 that the cargo vessel, the SS Beishamo, was making its monthly cross from Scotland to Alaska. The ship had already seen much in its day. Its weather-worn exterior was beaten from crossing the ice shelves of the Arctic time and time again. Its better days were behind it due to the 20 years of service. Its destination was Barrow, Alaska. The general purpose was to trade goods with the locals. The captain studied the map carefully. According to the compass, they were more than halfway there and would reach Barrow by the next day. A loud cracking signaled an easy voyage as the shelf ice separated in droves. It was quite the sight to watch the sheets of perfect white shatter and break under the immense weight that was the Basham. Peering through a set of binoculars, the captain could see nothing but the endless sea of white. As he surveyed the scene, his vision came upon an odd sight. It was far away, but he could see something in the distance. A lone black object sitting in the edge of the horizon, on a large shelf of packed ice. He steered the ship as close as he could, and anchored it next to the shelf. Maritime law required a captain to assist anyone who would be in distress. He ordered the crew to walk into the ice and investigate the unknown object. A reluctant team lowered themselves into the shelf and made the daunting journey. A shrill wind beat their faces red as their boots grew heavy with ice. What was once a black dot in the distance was now clear. What stood before the crewmates was a large black obelisk with unnatural edges and protruding columns. One of the crewmates pressed on it, causing it to fall forward. A crewman remarked that it must be fairly light to have stood on the pack ice for what had to be years. They agreed the object might be worth something. So with the combined efforts of all the men, they bound it with ropes and dragged it back. On deck, the captain and crew thoroughly examined it. If not for its weight, he thought it might be obsidian. The odd etchings, which were deep and covered nearly the entire surface of it, led the captain to believe that this was some relic of an Inuit tribe. He dismissed the crew, ordering them to return to their duties. On deck, alone with the object, he thought he heard a low, barely audible ringing. The next day, the captain was awoken to the sound of someone banging on his quarter's door. A crewman confided that his bunkmate had locked himself in a restroom and wouldn't come out. Walking down the corridor, which led to the crew's quarters, he could hear screaming of the man. The men he passed looked terrified. He withdrew his master key from his jacket and unlocked the door. As he did, the screaming stopped. The rusty hinges squealed as the door crept open. Handprints of black and red stained the inside of the hall and dragged across the ceiling and floor. The lifeless body of the bunkmate was slumped over the toilet and sink. It, too, covered in blood and black liquid. The captain closed the door, locked it, and ordered the men not to go near the room. Suddenly, the ship shuddered to a halt. The captain rushed up to the bridge to see what had happened. The helmsman was absent from his post leaving the ship's gear in full forwards and port door open. There was no apparent sign of a struggle. The ship had run into thick pack ice. It was now utterly stuck. According to the map, they were a mere three hours away from Barrow, but the ice would force them to make the rest of the journey on foot. Upon their return they found that the entire crew of 15 had gone missing, along with the body of the dead crew member and the black obelisk. The Beishamo would be abandoned that same day. 